Tonight we got this steel TS400 demo saw. Got it from some buddies. Um, I think it's in pretty good condition, but it does not run as is. We'll tear it apart, see what's going on with the carb, you know, give it a good once over. And I'm gonna need this saw to cut up scrap cars, cut the roof off my Jeep, um, probably do some actual concrete work with it as well. So I think I'll get some great use out of this piece of equipment. Start at the back here, pull the air cleaner out of it. Got an air filter in it, which is good news. This is the pre-filter in the back here. Stuff's pretty important on these demo saws because when you're cutting concrete, the dust is no joke and it will tilt, tear up cylinders like you've never seen before. This rear air filter does not pry out. It actually bolts in with a couple T25s. Drop all the screws on the ground, critical step. All right, underneath that, you got this final screen filter here. I mean, steel knows what these saws are made for. They don't play games. This concrete dust is no joke. So if you get one of these and the air filter is not in good shape, chances are the top end of the engine is not in good shape either. I always give them a little sniff of that Walmart good good. Um, just test the ignition system, make sure everything else is okay. That way, I'm not wasting my time digging into the car when we got other issues going on. She runs, we know the ignition works fine, so we'll keep digging into the fuel system as suspected. So you get the engine shroud bolts out. There's four of them. They're the exact same length as the air filter bolts, so you can be pretty sloppy. With this, you can throw them all in the same bin. You need to pop the throttle linkage out of the trigger. They give you this pull tab here, so you slide a screwdriver behind it and carefully pry forward. And it'll pop right out of the trigger like that. Then you can just lift this whole assembly off. The kill switch is really cool on these. It's just a, uh, just a linkage that moves and it pushes on this contact here and grounds out the coil. I mean, these things are like really made to be worked on and I appreciate that. And if you didn't guess already, two more T25s down here at the bottom of the airbox housing. And then we have two eight millimeters down the bore there that you need to sneak out. Oh uh, yeah, drop that. Probably drop this one too, hopefully. Get that one together. You can pull your airbox housing off and swing it up out of the way. I'm gonna leave the uh, tube on the top of it for now. Now you wanna pull the fuel tag vent out, which is this right here. So pretty much you're just gonna start to pull on it. You might wanna pry on it with something. Um, they fit pretty tight in the bushing, but you want a nice tight fit. What this does is this draws clean. That's not exactly how I wanted that to go, but maybe it's good for demonstration purposes. Let's pull the rest of this out of here. Ah, oh, shit. All right. Well, typically they don't come out like that. All right. That's the way I wanted it to come out. Anyway, there's a very tight fitting grommet at the top of the fuel tank. This right here has two filter elements as well. So basically, um, this is a sealed fuel cap. When the engine needs to draw fuel in, it's gonna pull it through the air box, which is already triple filtered air. You've got two more filters in line here before you get into the fuel tank. All right, then take off the uh, top fuel line there, which just pulses a diaphragm underneath this cover we'll get into that later now the fuel line should be the only thing still attached to this should be able to slide her back off the studs 
fuel lines right here. And we are getting a little tight. So let's push her back on and pull the fuel line off. We've got nothing to lose because we're replacing that tail. Line off. This will finally slide off the studs, hopefully. Let's see if I forgot anything else. Okay. There we go. So the carb's off. We can set that aside, start working on that. And this is what we're left with. Here you've got your fitting for your fuel pickup. So you can pull that out and inspect it. Um, you do not want any air leaks in this or you will be drawing air into the fuel system. Come on. Man. It's hard to do everything one handed with the camera. This definitely ain't my style. That's for sure. Okay. Pop that out with the grommet. Carefully extract the contents. Look at this guy. You want to wiggle that until it's looking like uh, fish it through. And then, oops, get in there and get a hold of it with suppliers, and then get your new filter put in. You tuck that down in there, and that's it. It's not like a weed whacker where you're gonna pull that filter into the uh, edge of the tank or anything. You're just gonna simply tuck this, this upper bushing, which is part of the actual hose, back into the aluminum gas tank housing. Pain in the butt, you just gotta work it in all the way around. All right, so we're gonna start taking the carb apart now. I start on this side, pull these four screws out. Okay, I'm gonna lift that diaphragm off there. And then we're also going to peel it back from the backing plate. There's locating pins on this. You really can't put it on the wrong way. Okay. Now we look in here. This is essentially your main fuel valve. This is most important part, I mean, if this was on a four stroke, this would be your bowl, your float bowl and your needle valve here. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart so we can clean all these parts out. Keep your finger on it, cause it's spring loaded. She will pop out and shoot across the shop and you'll never see it again, so. Drop the screw out, slowly release. The needle bracket, the needle, the pin, and the spring. And we're going to set all them aside here. And there's that spring. Don't lose that. Okay. All right, then we got a couple T15s on the other side. Go ahead and remove these bad boys. Same thing, pull that off. Set this aside, this is important. And then you can also pull this gasket off very carefully. I do have a carb rebuild kit, but I like to save the factory gaskets just so I can inspect them later if I find anything strange. So this is the uh, incoming fuel circuit, you could say. 
right? You can follow your fuel line in here, comes through here, um, moves to different areas. There's a, let me see if I can show you that better. There's a screen in the bottom of this hole right here. And if you've got a plugged up fuel system, that's probably where you're gonna find it first. So this one actually looks really good. I have a replacement, I'm not even gonna bother. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna trace out all these fuel circuits with some carb cleaner, blow everything through. I'm gonna run my jets in, I'm gonna count them, see where they're at, pull them back out, clean all those circuits, put them back together. And then we'll catch up with you in a little bit. Put a brand new needle in it. It's always good to check the function here so you can see how that pivots. Pulls the needle up. So we'll be watching that this diaphragm we put on the bottom here, there's a push pin on it. Need to make sure it contacts that lever to give us that fueling action. The reason I said to remove everything carefully, even if you don't plan on reusing it, this is the OEM diaphragm. And this is the one from the rebuild kit. And you can see from shipping and packaging, this thing is totally wrecked. So this is going right in the trash. There's nothing wrong with this OEM piece. We cleaned it up, we'll put it right back together. Okay, this carb is all back together. I'm going to reinstall it now. There's really nothing special about the reinstall process. So literally just reverse what you did to take this off to put it back on. He's full of fuel, ready to go. I didn't put the air box back together yet, just in case I got hit her with a little juice to prime the carb. So all the fuel lines are empty, so this thing's gonna take a hell of a lot of pulls to get started if it will start, but we'll see. Top notch. Um, that wasn't too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the air filter back in the rest of it, but she seems to run really good. I may not even have to touch the jets on it, so we'll see. Happy I finally got that saw running. I've had it for uh, a month or two. I haven't had a chance to touch it, so it's good that that's up and going. I think it'll add to my capabilities for cutting stuff up. Typically, I'm using a torch or a plasma cutter, and that is not very portable, so this saw should be a nice addition. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.